Hello all and welcome to Wild Crochet yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on our corner to corner granny stitch blanket. It's so big I can't fit it in, sorry guys. <laughs> and that little bubble you see right there is not the blanket, that one right there. It's actually the board. I'm sorry guys, I should have pulled that out beforehand but as you can see the light beams in on the plastic. So there you go guys, this is where you will be up to by the end of this tutorial and I will show you um, before I head, you head off on your own, I'll show you what you need to do next. In the meantime, let's work on specs. For this tutorial, you will need um, an 8-ply cotton. This one is a Bendigo one. You can use any one you like, it doesn't matter. You can use a 10-ply, you can use 12-ply, you can use any ply you like. If you use a smaller ply, your blanket will come out smaller. And just so you know, the blanket itself measures 100 by 100 centimetres. Not really sure what you work in, uh, metres or yards or whatever. So there you go. Uh, just, you know, Dr. Google it. <laughs> and uh, there's your, oh, I'm very naughty. There's your eight fly cotton. It's a peppermint, this one here. You don't have to use this colour. Um, uh, by the way, I use this one for our St. Patrick's Day coaster. If you're interested in making that one, the link to that one is in the description box down below. In the meantime, we used a 4mm hook and I will be using a 4mm hook. And as you can see, they're coloured pencils. This is a part that you don't need to stress too much about, but I'll talk about that in a minute. The other thing we used today was we started, as you can see, we started our peach colour there. Okay, You will need the peach. You will need the green. If you're following the same colours as us, these are the two colours you will need. You will need a blue, a gorgeous, gorgeous blue. You will also need a, um, this is called daffodil, but you just any yellow will be fine. The daffodil, that's the light yellow for Bendigo. And then you'll need my favourite colour if you are interested in my favourite colour, which is the pomegranate. So there you go. So you will need one, two, three, four, five colours. I used five colours in this blanket as well. The colours will be different to this. They're similar, but not the same. So if you wanted to follow this, this particular pattern here, have a look, see at these colours you can. But we are working on our own colour combination. Now, if you have your own colour combination, again, here's a few tips on how to prepare your own colour combination. Now, I explained it in the tutorial. So don't stress, I'm not going to explain it in full now because I want you to um, go ahead and start your uh, blanket. But this is the colour combination that I used, okay? This is the one I'm going to use and these ones here are our borders so you don't need to worry about that to the end, okay? But all you need to worry about is this part here and that is this green right here. Okay, it's kind of like, kind of like a quarter scale, it's a little bit, a little bit bigger than a quarter scale. Then we've got this part. Now, this I got these papers from an exercise book of graphs. It's just a basic graph book. I ripped two, I'm lying, I ripped four sheets out and I stuck them together only with just a basic sticky tape, nothing fancy, okay? If you have Excel on your computer, you can use Excel as well. Um, here we have 60 rows all together, okay, 60 rows. Now, what I did basically was I counted seven blocks up that way, seven blocks up this way. I put the letter G down here, seven there. That's to tell me there's seven rows and we're using green for the seven rows. Here we are using three rows of your orange. As you can see, I've only coloured in two pieces because I've only done two cluster sets. All right, now explain all that in the tutorial, so don't stress. Um, so further in the tutorial, there are other colours and that gets explained. Now, if that's all too confusing for you in the tutorial, all you have to remember is firstly how to make this piece, which is in the tutorial, then just follow that. Now that list is the list of colours that I'm using. And if you wanted to use the same colours, you can. If you wanted to change your colours, but use the same diagram set up, then by all means change them. But these are the rows and these are the colours I've used. As you can see, I've highlighted that I've done my seven rows and I've done my seven rows there. All right. So there are three different ways that you can follow the system. Just be wary of count. Okay. 
it's not a difficult count. You are counting seven rows up that way, across that way, sorry, seven rows up and seven rows across. So no matter where you look at this piece, after each row, it should all add up to be the same seven, seven, seven. When you get to the orange, this will be the eighth row. So you go eight, 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 all right? Simple, simple, we hope. <laughs> <laughs> you will also need for this tutorial your scissors and you will need your darning needle because we weave in one end. There's your blanket. My name is Mary. This is Well Crochet. We are going to get started on our corner to corner granny stitch blanket. Good luck guys. Alrighty guys, we are going to start off with our green and just quickly letting you know it does call for a four millimeter hook. Yours truly did use the four millimeter hook on the original blanket. So we are going to make a second blanket with the same size hook. You don't need to. Um, you could use a four and a half, a five, whatever suits you or 3.5, whatever suits you. All right, so four millimeter hook. Don't forget to have your scissors with you. And of course, you will need that darning needle because we will be changing colors. All right. Remember, guys, you can use any color coordination you like. However, I'm about to show you parts of the colors that I have used or will use. Very, It's pretty much exactly, it actually is exactly the same as the other blanket, but just different color combinations. So this is a great way to de-stash your yarn. So let give me one second and I'll show you the design. Just to show you initially the colors of what mine, oh, sorry, I'm no artist, I do apologize. But just to show you initially what my colors will look like. That's the colors of our, my blanket here that I'm going to be creating today. Well, not so much today, over the next few weeks. And these are the color combinations and they're exactly the same colors that I will be using in the blanket so like as you can see that first color right there is the green this is actually the border okay so don't worry about that until the very end but this is the green that we are using today then we'll be going on to the orange the yellow the orange and so on now to help you out I have written a small list as well so don't stress um, I'll show you that towards um, the end of the tutorial plus I wanted to show you how I create my blankets when it comes to doing uh, corner to corner. I have a book with all these little graph papers on. Now you can use your Excel. You can use whatever you like. You don't have to do this, okay? This is something that I do. So let's say for argument's sake, we are going to do start with our green today, which we are. So yours truly has counted, all right? I'll be using seven rows of your green so i've counted seven blocks up one two three four five six seven and then i just went down all the way till i got to the bottom popped the word green the word the letter green right there and when i do one cluster i color it in when i do the second row i color it in and i'll tell you exactly when we're doing our first second and third rows because this part here is the start and can be a little bit confusing at first but once you get past the third row you know exactly what you're doing okay so by the time I finished my seventh row this whole piece would have been colored in now let's say for argument's sake we get halfway through the blanket which is there okay and we are doing the exact same combination on the other side yours truly instead of you know because I'm a little bit lazy instead of coloring it in the other side I grab my highlighter and I go back the other way but you don't have to worry about that for now okay if you wanted to do this on Excel um, on your computer Excel or if you wanted to do it via what I've done here then go ahead and start your color combinations and just start off with a block of 10 for now have a practice because you don't have to worry about this I've all done done it all for you so you don't have to worry about it but just in the future if you wanted to do your own block go ahead and have a play with a small piece or a small uh, swatch if you will okay but in the meantime don't stress about this I will show you that properly one day a full tutorial on how to do a whole blanket like this but for now I just wanted to show you pretty much how I've worked it and I started with of course as I showed you before with this piece right here right there that's how I started 
I played with a bit of colour, 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 colour. And in actual fact, I was supposed to do a quarter scale, but by the time I got to here, my quarter scale was just, I was over making a mess. And so I just made the quarter scale a bit larger. So that, I put the numbers next to it, so I knew what I wanted to do. So I wrote seven in green, three in orange, three in yellow, three in orange, five in green and so on and so on all the way up so for today all you need to know is <laughs> wait till I get that piece of paper again these rows okay so don't worry about all this other stuff that I've done I will do a full tutorial on that one day because it does take a while to work out um, and it's three different ways so you can't mess up your blanket remembering when it comes to a blanket if you are doing your blanket for um, yourself and you mess it up you can just add an extra row or reduce it or whatever and it might be a little bit wrong like you might have two extra rows of your red or your green instead of your brown or whatever color you used whereas if you are making for a customer um, or a friend or a family member you want it to be perfect if you're anything like me you really want it to be perfect so I do the three different ways where I color first then I do the graph and then I write out what I've got on the graph. Now this is only a few rows, as you can see, it's not the full blanket of what was on the graph. So grab yourself a little screenshot of that, or if you wanna come back and read this, these are the rows that I need you to do over the next two weeks. We are going to start off with a slip knot. These are very basic stitches in crochet. This whole blanket is quite basic. You just have to watch count, that's all. So yarn over your finger once and yarn over your finger twice. Grab your little tail end down there, your back loop, pass it halfway over that front loop, grab the other loop and then pull it back through. Whoops, that's a pencil, not a hook. <laughs> Let's try the hook. Wake up, Mary. <laughs> all right, so all we're going to do right now is start. Okay, now these chains here, you don't want to do these too tight, but you don't want to have them too loose as well. So kind of watch your uh, tension, okay? So you're chaining one, and a chain is yarn over your hook, pull a loop through once. Yarn over your hook, twice. Yarn over your hook, three. And yarn over your hook, four. All right, easy, easy. Now, jump into that first stitch that you made, passing your two loops over like so and one loop under there okay grab a loop and pull it through holding everything there like so okay pull that loop through there and you formed your little circle okay see how I need that circle to be open now we are going to chain up four one two three and four then you are going to put a double crochet in the center of that space that we just made. So yarn over your hook, and we are doing our first double crochet. You pop your hook in the space, and over all thicknesses here, okay? Pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. It's a little bit fiddly, this part. Yarn over your hook, pull through the first two loops. Yarn over your hook, pull through the last two loops. Easy, easy. We're going to do another double crochet sorry yarn over your hook pop it in your space pull up a loop yarn over your hook pull through the first two yarn over your hook pull through the last two now you're going to do one more okay so what you have so far is you've chained four which will classify as a double crochet chain one then you've done three double crochets now you're going to chain one and you're going to put another double crochet in that same space. Okay. Now this you're going to need is going to be one of your corners, hence the word corner to corner. All right. So now we're going to, I'm sorry, chain four. <laughs> one, two, three, and four. Turn your work. Now remember that space we made, the chain stitch there, and there was a space there and there's a space on the end. We're going to put three double crochets in that first space. So yarn over your hook, pop your three double crochets in that first space. One, two, three. 
also forgot to mention that there are two versions to this. This is one version. If you wanted to do the version where you don't have a lot of chains or chain spaces in between and your, your granny is kind of squashed up a little bit more, you skip the chains that we do in between each cluster set. All right, but we are going to chain one. And this is called a cluster set, by the way. Once you do three double crochets in this pattern, we'll call that a cluster set. You pop a double crochet, I'm sorry, you pop a cluster set, which is three double crochets, in that next space. One, two, and three. Just going to slow that down for my newbies. All right. So now we chain one, and we put another double crochet in that space. So pretty much what you have is that. All right, and there's your start of your corner. You can see the corner happening already. Now, before we go on, if you did what I did with this little piece right here, you would grab your green. See that very first cluster set that we did? That is your first piece right there. Okay, and now we've got one, two, and that's your one and your two. Okay, see how it goes like that? Your two. Now we're going to do the next row, which is your third row. All right, I'm going to pop it there. So you chain up four. One, two, three, and four. You turn your work and you put three double crochets in that first space. Again, like we did before. Two and three chain one now you will have a space before that little one in the corner there we're going to pop three double crochets or a cluster set in that space one two and three chain one now you chain one after every cluster set after every third double crochet that you make. Okay, now three double crochets in your last space. One, two, three. Chain one, then you pop another double crochet in there. All right, now just before you finish, I wanna show you again what I meant about this color. When you're coloring, We've just done that third row, so this is your third row. One block, two blocks, three blocks. So what you've got there is your one block, two block, three blocks. And you've got your little gaps at the end of those blocks where you're preparing to put two more there, which will be one, two, three, four, okay? All right. So for every row that you do, what I meant there was, for every row that you do is the same amount down that way as well. So this is your third row. One, two, three. One, two, three. And right down there, it's one, two, three. You might find it going a bit like that. That will sort itself out as we grow the blanket. All right, so don't stress. That is normal. We're going to turn out. No, we're not. <laughs> we're going to chain up four. One, two, three, and four. Turn your work. Pop your first cluster set in that space. So three double crochets in the space. I think you're starting to get a picture now. Two and three. Except now that it's growing, you're going to have two spaces to pop cluster sets in. All right. You chain one, pop a cluster set in that first. Let's actually classify the second space because your first is there. So your second is there. Three, chain one, do another set there, one, two, three, chain one, I hope I'm not going too fast for you guys, sorry, slow that down a bit, and in your space, your last space, you are putting three double crochets, one, two, and three. 
And don't forget when we get to the last space, we chain one and then we add one last double crochet in that space, which is helping you form your space for your next row. So you chain one, two, three and four, turn your work and do your first cluster set in there, which is one, two, I'm going to hold it there for a second because I forgot to do this. Okay, so this is your next the row that we just did. And I'm going to show you something. So you know what I'm doing here. Let's say you are at row number 150, right? Just for argument's sake. Let's move that out the way so you can see. Um, I never did finish that one, so we'll finish that space right there chain one then you do another cluster set in there so you've got maybe 150 cluster sets across right let's just pretending okay so you chain one then you realize you have to rush off and cook dinner or do something so you pop it down but you're not very experienced at crochet so you say to yourself how am I supposed to remember where I was this is where you grab your piece your little sheet this is why I do this and you colour in one, two. You colour in two of that row right there. And then you know what? Before you leave, make it nice and neat the colour. Because then you'll realise later that you still haven't done one, two, three blocks. We'll say 30 blocks. So you come back in two weeks' time because dinner took two weeks to cook. <laughs> Exaggerating, of course. And you realise you still have another 30 blocks you need to do because all you need to do is look at that. <laughs> all you need to do is look at that little bit of work that we did and then you realise, oh gosh, I still have, you know, 30 blocks to do. So you never get confused. So if you are a type of person who are new at doing something like this, I would suggest drawing up something like that or making up something through your Excel on the computer. If you have Excel. If you don't have Excel, then, you know, just sketch it up like I've done there. And I actually will use that all the way through this tutorial. Um, not so much this tutorial, but all the way through the blanket on purpose because there is, I will forget. And I do, especially because I do so many projects that I'll forget exactly where I am. Okay. So we are going to continue our work. I hope that helped you. Um, if you are new and learning um, all about crochet and measurements and so on because you don't want to be one cluster short it can put your whole blanket out it'll be lopsided it'll be a mess and you'll think well wait a minute I did exactly what you said but it is easy to miss a cluster set okay so just keep going all the way across get to the end here two and three and then I'll explain what we're going to do next chain one do your double crochet at the in the last space okay now just don't chain up four right now just leave it there you now have one two three four five cluster sets there one two three four five cluster sets there therefore you should have and this is another way of checking five cluster sets colored in now we've got one two three four five colored in here but we've only got four coloured in there. Why? Because we started doing those two cluster sets. Let me colour that in properly. So we just finished the last three cluster sets when we came back from having, you know, our two-week dinner. <laughs> I'm sorry, I do get a bit, I get a bit off, don't I, sometimes? Sorry, guys. So now you have two more rows of your green to do. Let's push that out the way so I can see. So what I would like for you to do is do your two rows of green, okay? No, Remembering to chain up four to begin and then turn your work. Chaining one in between each space. Get to the end of each row, chain one and then a double crochet. Okay, so you're putting one, two, three, four, five cluster sets in this row. Your next row will be six and your next row will be seven. Get to the end of the row. Don't do your last double crochet. Wait for me there. So do two more rows. Meet me up here and I'll tell you what we're going to do next. All right, here we are at the end of the seventh row. How do we know it's the seventh row? We pull it to the side and we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We go to the other side, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The reason I count across here is because no matter how you look at this piece, it's going to be exactly the same all the way around. Now, I do that so that let's just say you forget to do the last cluster set or you skip one in the middle and you've got six across and you don't know how you did it. So you just take that row undone or, or you find the mistake. You might have, you know, you might find the mistake, go up to the mistake and then finish off. Nothing worse than doing a whole blanket and finding out that the whole blanket is lopsided because you don't know where the mistake was. So really focus on that count. It'll be difficult once you do like, say 150 rows <laughs> but we're only doing 60 in our blanket anyway so it's not a stressful blanket at all now i told you to get to the end of this green row and chaining one before you do your last double crochet now the reason is because we are going to change colors yay so double crochet your last one in that space don't finish it pull it through the first three loops grab your new color which I believe is, um, actually, we'll have a look at our list, is seven green, seven rows green, three rows orange. Grab your new colour. Before you do, colour in your work. I've already done that off air, okay? So grab your new colour, which is our orange. Grab the loop and just pull a loop through. So at this stage, you have the green and the tail end just hold them at the back with one hand give it a tug chain up four one two three and four turn your work like you were doing in the greens there's no different all you did was add that extra color and you're going to do your first cluster set as normal so there's nothing different it's all the same you're just changing colors and I love green and orange together. Love, love, love. But then I love everything, don't I, guys? <laughs> You're probably sick of hearing me say it, you know. Chaining one and doing your next cluster set. All right, we're going to stop right here for a minute. Chain one. Okay. Now, the reason we're stopping is because I think you get the picture. Yes? Now, what I would like for you to do... Firstly, firstly, you need to cut these ends. So grab your scissors, cut your green. I always cut the green and orange the same length. It helps me to weave them in later. Move your green out the way. Now, all you need to focus on now is grabbing this piece of paper and I'll show you what you've done so far. Now, this is another step I do. I either, actually I usually do, put a highlight through that. I don't want to put it on my board. Just make sure I don't mess my board up. So what I do is I highlight that there to say that I've done seven rows. Or I tick it, right? Don't do both, just do one. Because we are going to do exactly the same combination on the way back of our blanket. Okay, so you're going to need all this later. So one will be highlighted on the way back, you just tick it. That'll make sense on the way back. So either tick it the first time and then highlight it, or highlight it and then tick it. I really should actually tick it because that's what we're doing here. Okay, and then we're going to highlight it on the way back. But again, don't worry about that at all. Just worry about what you're going to do next. And your next step is, now let's get a nice close up. You've done your seven rows green. Now you're onto your orange. Now I want you to do this. Head off on your own. And this is going to take you a while because as the blanket gets bigger, the more rows you do, the more cluster sets you'll end up having across the row. So it's going to take a while. So what I would like for you to do in part one right here, right now, is to do three rows in orange. And now that you know how to change colors, do your three rows in yellow, three rows in orange, Five rows green, three orange, one blue, one red, one blue, three orange, and five green. This is your job so far. All you need to do is focus on those rows. I'm leaving it here for a few seconds so you can check it out. Okay, now 
head off on your own, do these rows, meet me back here in a week or two weeks time. I'll talk to you through our lives so we can discuss where everybody's at and we will focus on the rest of part of the half of our blanket. I don't want to confuse you too much so all I would like for you to do is do those rows in the colours of your choice okay or in the colours that I've chosen okay and as you can see in the promo the colours that I've chosen I popped each colour up and the labels for you so you can actually see it all right so now if you wanted to which I think is a really good idea because you've already started your orange I'm going to just quickly Weave in the green. Whoops, there we go. So what we're going to do is pop our thread in our needle. All right, now, for the best way of doing this is, you could, and I think I'll do that too, grab your thread and your needle and pop your needle and even uh, an even closer look at it. So you can see that's that's where your thread is coming out of right there all right so we are going to pass our thread into that little stitch right there and going through all these thicknesses and I'm actually splitting the yarn on the inside of that cluster set now just have a look see make sure that everything is correct before doing this because you can't take this undone and if you want to wait till the end to do this part of the tutorial you can but I'm going to show you now okay which is right there now if it's pulling a little bit don't let it pull too much because you need that space later to do our border rows in so make sure it's as straight as the rest of your um, clusters okay now go back the other way of course in a different section so you don't unravel what you just did which is what I'm doing right there okay right there now if you're anything like me because I'm going to be doing a border then you will do exactly this next step you don't have to but this is a step I do because I know I'm going to be putting a border on this blanket so I pop it through each stitch along the side just for one section right there okay then I hop into that stitch right there just to close up shop like that and go back into the next section done or you can do another one if you're really worried about it coming undone before the end of the blanket is done so now you pull your little needle out you give it a cut oh, I've made a mess here already okay so that's your thread weaved in not only is it weaved in there but it's weaved back gone around and back up again we are going to be putting our border row on that so that will lock it into place once again or you could leave your tail ends and crochet over them when we're doing our border so there are numerous ways you can do this but that is the way I like to do it so when it's time to crochet over the blanket in this particular blanket when it's time to crochet a border over there then um, it's already done and I don't have to worry about weaving in ends except that very first one leave that I just um, I actually leave it so it reminds me of where I first started you'll know where you first started but that that's what I do anyway all right now head off on your own you're gonna love this guys do all these rows it's gonna take you like 2.5 million years yeah come back and join me in a week or two weeks time and I will get on to the very next step of what we are going to do with our corner to corner blanket all right so there you go yay <laughs> that's part one of our corner to corner granny square blanket oh no <laughs> it was one of those things again corner to corner granny stitch blanket yay <laughs> now i got it all right head up on your own good luck meet me back here in a week or so time to do part two and that's all I want to say, guys. Also, don't forget to join me for Saturday's Live and to see how far I've gotten with our blanket and to discuss our future projects. Yay, very excited. Oh, and also, guys, join me on Saturday 
to find out the full details of the giveaway. Yay, very, very excited. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and do all those wonderful things that you do for me. And uh, my name is Mary. This is Well Crochet and <laughs> ciao for now.